Star Wars The Clone Wars brought back and expanded upon many antagonists Star Wars fans had come to love over the years, like Darth Maul and Count Dooku. One villainous character that returned was, predictably, Jabba the Hutt. The Clone Wars gave us an opportunity to learn a little more about Hutt life and politics through Zero the Hutt's arc, and it's that deeper lore that we'll be delving into today. During that arc, a captured Zero the Hutt was brought before the Great Hutt Council, which was the ruling body of all the Huts at the time. In today's video, we'll be taking a closer look at the five Huts that made up the Hutt Council at the time of the Clone Wars, and talking about the different areas of crime each Hutt clan was involved in. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The Hutt Ruling Council, also known as the Council of Elders, the Grand Council of Nal Hutta, and other grandiose titles, was a five-member council that ruled over the entirety of the Hutt species. It was established by Bordila Hestilic Amura, one of the leaders of the Huts, when they moved to Nal Hutta following the Hutt cataclysms around 15,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. The Council of Elders presided over the daily life of their entire species and all of Hutt space. They were also tasked with representing the Huts in diplomatic meetings with other galactic powers, such as the Galactic Republic and later the Galactic Empire. A steadfast rule was that the five council seats were always filled by members of the clans of the Ancients. This was the name given to the nine Hut clans that could trace their ancestry all the way back to the Hut's ancient homeworld, Val. They were the Desilegic, Besedai, Quanlak, Barish, Gorensla, Kajadir, Jirama, Vandarajar, and Vasadi clans. Now, you'll notice that there were nine clans, but only five seats. Our general understanding is that the council was made up of five members that represented the five most prominent families at the time, which were known as the Five Hut Families. Depending on which clans held the most power, the makeup of the council changed. Even these five seats weren't always distributed among five families. Depending on the power struggles, politics, and alliances at the time, one clan could hold more than one seat. Despite this unequal representation, the goal of the Hutt Council was to rule over all the clans fairly. When it was time to vote, they gathered in the Hutt Council Chamber, which wasn't located in a set place like the Jedi Temple was. The Council Chamber changed from time to time depending on the members themselves. During the Clone Wars, for example, it was located in Gardula the Hutt's palace. Although the Council made decisions together, the leader of the most powerful syndicate, also known as the Kajidik in Hutt's, was also considered the de facto council leader. These syndicates were synonymous with the Hutt families, and it was the syndicate leaders that could attain council seats. With that bit of background exposition out of the way, let's get to talking about the Clone Wars era Hutt Lords. Our first entry is about Aruba the Hutt, the leader of the Gorensla clan at the time of the Clone Wars. He was probably the most interesting Hutt to look at, as he was an albino. He was born with a mutation that meant his skin was white, with light redness on his face. His condition was a source of shame for him, which is also why he was one of the rare few huts that chose some form of clothing. In our opinion, he looked particularly dapper in his fancy cape and beret. His fickleness wasn't just limited to his appearance. He proved to be a bit of a screamer, though we suppose terror is an appropriate emotional response to being murdered by Sith. When he wasn't being shish kebabbed by Savage Press, Aruba was a man of culture. He loved food, music, money, and more food. On a more serious note, he was more conservative than other huts and voted in favor of more traditionalist decisions as part of the council. His syndicate, the Gorensla Kajidik, focused on running the black market. They operated from within the shadows, rigging legislation in their favor, controlling spaceports, and silently becoming the backbone of entire economies, which they then controlled in secret. Some of the other huts on our list weren't so subtle. The second hut we'll be looking at today was Arok the Hut, an elder hut and leader of the Besadi Kajidik during the Clone Wars. He had orange eyes, blue and yellow skin, and the generous proportions that characterized all hut physiques. Every hut crime lord seemed to have their own vice, and Arox was smoking and admiring Smexy Twi'lek dancers, which we can't really blame him for. Unlike most huts, however, he actually showed true loyalty to his clan. 
They were important enough to him that his distant relatives clamoured in his support, and he had the clan crest tattooed on his arm. His clan, the Besserai, were known slavers and had numerous slave operations across the galaxy, such as on the tropical world of Alessia. Alongside Arok, Gardula the Hutt was another infamous hut of the Basadi clan. As we mentioned before, the hut council chambers were in his palace. Although we don't know much about the Basadi clan, this is a good indication that they held considerable power among the hut clans. We do know that they were the sworn rivals of the Desilogic clan, which was the clan Jabba and Zero the Huts belonged to, and which we'll be talking about next. Our third and fourth entries are about Jabba the Hutt and his nephew, Gorga the Hutt, both members of the Desilogic clan. At the time of the Clone Wars, both these Huts had seats on the Hutt Council. Their clan was one of the most powerful Hutt families, and their combined power was such that it earned them two seats on the Council. Starting with Jabba, he's undoubtedly the most famous Hutt of all time. His full name was Jabba Desilogic Tiora, though he primarily went by his first name alone. Particularly gargantuan, with green and tan skin, he was known for his vicious temper and cruelty. Incredibly greedy even compared to other huts, he loved violent entertainment, young female dancers, and making trophies out of the carbon-frozen bodies of his enemies, as you do. He hated people who attempted to lie to him or challenge his authority. That said, he did have a soft spot for his son, Rotta. As soft as a hut ever got. Jabba was part of the Desilogic Syndicate, which he ran from his palace on Tatooine in the Outer Rim. He was Tatooine's daimyo, lording over all criminal activity on the Dust Bowl. His influence didn't stop there, however. He had great control over the Hyperlanes in the Outer Rim, which both the Republic and the Separatists sought to exploit. His clan were nefarious for their involvement in piracy, slavery, and smuggling, especially of spice and other illegal goods. Gorga the Hutt, or Gorga Desilogic Arpo, was Jabba the Hutt's nephew. At the time of the Clone Wars, he ruled the clan alongside his uncle, and together, they represented it on the Hutt Council. After Jabba's death, he inherited his criminal empire and swore to expand it even further in the galaxy. Like Jabba, he had green and tan skin and turquoise eyes. Compared to his uncle's vicious cruelty, Gorga was more infamous for his love of money and plotting, something that most huts were notorious for. Gorga, however, took it a step further. You see, he was self-aware and aware of his fellow hut's shortcomings, so he was fully capable of taking advantage of his awareness and out-scheming the schemers, some of whom were older and theoretically wiser than him. He routinely fudged numbers so he could steal money from his clan, though he was careful enough to not affect their daily operations. Our final entry for today's video has, perhaps, the funniest bit of backstory we could ever hope for when it came to the huts. May we present the meme, the legend, Marlo the Hut. Not much is known about his Kajidik, the Quanlak, other than that they were highly militaristic and retained the army-like qualities of the ancient huts. Rather than focusing on that, we'll instead be talking about what a meme Marlo was. If his name and appearance seem vaguely familiar, that's because Marlo was directly inspired by Marlon Brando's portrayal of Don Vito Corleone in The Godfather. The Hutt's name was adapted from the actor's first name, and his appearance was modified to resemble an Italian mob boss as much as possible, and we're here for it. This majestic specimen of a hut had violet eyes and tan and brown skin that sported a mark on his face to make him look like he had a stylish mustache. He was completely hairless, like all huts, but he wore a Shirelian toop on top of his head to make it look like he had actual hair. This troop was a literal living creature that lived on top of his glistening noggin, and if that isn't the best thing you've heard today, we don't know what is. Sometimes fiction writers disappoint. Sometimes they surpass expectations we didn't even know we had, and we couldn't be happier for it. And there you have the story of the five Hutt crime lords that made up the Hutt government during the Clone Wars. Which entry were you most surprised by? Feel free to let us know in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.